Master Saturn here with another BDSM United podcast. Unless you fear repercussions from friends, family, or work, you can use your regular legal name in the BDSM world. However, you probably should consider adopting a different name if you're worried about people connecting you to BDSM. Please be aware it's not uncommon for uh, things to happen like children to be taken away from their custodial parents because they participate in uh, BDSM, especially because in a lot of places, BDSM is not entirely legal. A lot of jurisdictions, jurisdictions don't allow somebody to consensually um, or to consent to pain, consent to being essentially abused. And so, uh, especially if it's something like impact play or other kinds of S&M type activities. Um, we've heard of different cases like that. And sometimes, if, especially if you're in a professional career, like a nurse, a doctor, uh, even a dentist, uh, a school teacher, a daycare worker, something like that, uh, you may need to um, cover up your legal name from, uh, from public use on sites like FetLife or otherwise. Uh, for submissives, if you enter into a power imbalanced relationship, your dominant may wish to rename you as part of the power exchange. Your new name becomes a constant reminder that this is not a vanilla relationship. So we typically tell people, especially on FetLife, uh, you're going to come up with a screen name. So come up with something that is um, uh, that doesn't try too hard. There's these try hard kind of people that are like, you know, large, giant dick 24 or something of that nature or sassy, bratty baby girl or 22 or something of that nature. Don't try too hard because you're going to likely keep this name for a while. So be thoughtful about it and let it be somewhat general, especially if you're new and you're just exploring. Uh, don't, like I said, don't make it into something that is going to confine you into one type of thing. Uh, if don't, you know, you may not want to put your uh, sexual orientation or your uh, or those types of things within it, because that's going to radically define uh, who may, you know, be interested in doing a kink with you. So um, it can be a challenge to find a name uh, that sufficiently. Uh, evocative yet also acceptable for public use. While you might enjoy, enjoy calling being called slut or cunt in private, it won't work when you're shopping or at a restaurant. Uh, so you may want to be equally cautious if you're a dominant or a master or uh, as, you know in a, of a more dominant persuasion. As uh, uh, it may seem kind of silly uh, it, within the scene. You want people to be able to take you somewhat seriously. I was kind of, you know, Primal Piggy was kind of borderline for me because of the Piggy thing, but Piggy meant a certain kind of kink and not that I was trying to say I looked like a pig or I... Um, was unkept like a pig. It wasn't that kind of thing. So it was an appropriate scene name because it uh, described a certain kink within our culture. And Primal, you know, as well was, um, uh, it, it fit. And so, you know, Master Daddy Braddy, you know, Baby Mama is not, you know, it's going to be hard for people to take you seriously. You know, big man, master full, are risk drawing unfavorable attention. As you're selecting a scene name, consider how you would react to the name 
if someone were introduced that way to you. Because sometimes when we go to a munch or or an event, um, someone will uh, want to associate you with your FetLife profile so they know who they're talking about or talking to. Um, most often, folks choose a scene name that's uh, a common given name, just not their own. Like Mike is really Bill, and Cynthia is really Mary. Uh, we've known people for many years and have been surprised to discover that the name that they've been using all the time is really a scene name. When I first was dipping my toes in BDSM and uh, polyamory, I used uh, J.J. Fillmore. It was similar to my name, but it was a different name. And so uh, it served a purpose for that period of time as I was exploring. And I finally shifted from that to Primal Piggy for a season. Now that I am uh, not focusing as much on kink and focusing more on power exchange and self-mastery, I've taken the name Master Saturn. Um... Uh, for some, uh, some names uh, are appropriate and uh, some are not. Names like Cat, Kitten, or Scarlet can pretty much pass anywhere. People recognize these names. Names like Baby Girl, Hot Stuff, and uh, Angel Pie can pass in most settings. And people will recognize them as uh, terms of endearment. Uh, used within an established relationship, but you may run into trouble introducing your girl uh, as, uh, you know, I'd like you to meet Hot Stuff 62. It, uh, uh, it's somewhat a little subjective there. Names like uh, Pussy and Succulents and Curious and Pixie Doodle and Chocolate Hussy are going to... Uh, probably not be the best kinds of things in, you know, there. if you're ever in a more vanilla setting at a munch and you're trying to talk about your scene name or trying to use your scene name and it's pussy cunt, it's going to be difficult for people to call you by your scene name in a vanilla scene without, or a vanilla place without sounding... Uh, like they're cussing at you. Also, maybe avoid something degrading uh, like that. Uh, just in general, you know, just especially while you're... It could be a pet name that you have in your partnership, but just not as a scene name, like on FetLife. Or, uh, like I said, if you ever plan to go to an event. Or maybe you never plan to go to an event, but you have to plan as if you may go to an event because as you're exploring, you're going to grow. Things are going to change. There's going to be things that you would never consider doing that as you grow in, in this culture and are introduced to things, you, you know, your interests may change. That's also something to take into consideration. We don't really want to criticize anyone for the names they select. I'm sure Two Inch Destroyer... 24 is a nice, you know, nice person. And, uh, you know, uh, Big Giant Cock 22, I'm sure, is nice as well. But uh, we're just trying to inject a little bit of wisdom. Also, try not to be a vanilla person, uh, you know, from the outside looking in uh, when you name yourself. You know, gang bang milf daddy is just going to, you know, from, you know, so it's tr someone just trying to look for a hookup within our culture. It's just not going to be the kind of, you know, description you want of yourself. Just saying. Um, sometimes it's a dominant partner, like we said, that chooses it for a submissive partner. Just evaluate any name you consider in light of its impact on the public and others in our community. Remember, BDSM is about consent, inflicting your personal fetishes in public 
including off-putting scene names, is non-consensual so far as vanilla life is concerned. Uh, so definitely just want to take some of this into consideration. And so uh, just a brief word on titles. Titles in the BDSM world can be controversial, and we want to bring them up pretty early for two reasons. First, to help you avoid choosing a title that may be inappropriate, and second, to alert you that there may not be any relationship between the title someone uses and the level of wisdom, knowledge, experience, or leadership ability that such a title would normally suggest. Does that make sense? Um, often titles are self-assumed, and those are ones that you give to yourself. And earned titles are ones that are bestowed upon you and there are fewer and fewer earned titles in our community. Uh, in more in leather culture, people may uh, go through, may, there may be a process of earning a title. And it used to be that earned titles were sometimes earned by the type of relationship that you were in. But um, there's a lot more self-assumed titles. Um, at one extreme, imagine an 18-year-old man who's just discovered BDSM. He assumes that because he's a man, he's a dominant. And more than that, he decides to introduce himself as Master Hugo because he feels the master title will give him place like stature and credibility around other men and women in the BDSM club. On the other extreme, you might meet a Master Hugo who's been involved with BDSM for decades, slowly gaining enough wisdom, skill, and seniority that other masters, dominants, and submissives in the scene call him Master Hugo. In the first case, the title is hollow. It's based only on ego and aspirations. He knows zip about anything. In the second case, the title master is a recognition of actual rank or accomplishment, indicating that others consider the man to have mastered a body of knowledge and skills to make him capable of giving good advice or even judging others' capabilities. This master, Hugo, could be a valuable resource to you, while the first could be almost anything from a harmless poser to a dangerous predator. So you definitely want to consider. Um, what makes the issue of titles even more confusing is that titles are often appropriate within a relationship. That is, if a dom wants their sub to use master, that's how it'll be. Just as if the master title does not automatically transfer outside of the relationship. So master or mistress... Uh, is likely to be an issue of whether the dominant or the D-type, as they're sometimes called, identifies that way within the relationship. It's not so much a uh, title as it is an honorific within that relationship, but that doesn't mean that just because they are the master in that relationship that they are somehow master of anything else. So how do you address someone that you don't know? Well, it depends on a number of variables. but Usually, you refer to people exactly as they were first introduced to you. If you met someone as Sir Stephen, then until they tell you different, you use Sir or Sir Stephen to address them. Until you find out, more maybe until you find out more about them, if they don't seem to have earned that title from anywhere else, and they are they think that you're submissive and they just want you to be calling them sir, then you may just want to, uh, you know, through wisdom, uh, change that a little bit, and you know people can be casual about titles. Um, and some people can be a little more challenging to figure out. Um, they may be, like I said, they may be aspirational titles more than that, more than they uh, are credible titles. And so it's definitely something to think about. 
But the best case, the best thing to do is just to address people as they were first introduced to you. So Sir Stephen, whether he deserves to be Sir Stephen or deserves, deserves to be called Sir, you should just really, you know, just best for, you know, the, just do the best that you can by calling them what they ask you to call them. It doesn't really cost you anything. It doesn't cost you anything to call somebody Sir or Sir Stephen just because they want. It's like kind of like pronouns. It doesn't really cost us anything to use a different pronoun for a person, even if we don't think that they deserve that pronoun. It doesn't really cost us anything to show that level of respect to somebody, whether we think they deserve it or not. I'm Master Saturn. Thank you for joining me for this BDSM United podcast. You can find all of our resources, all of our previous podcasts, and more at www.bdsmunited.com. It was a joy bringing this topic to you today, and I'll talk with you again soon.